Outstanding. We're cooking with hot grease. God bless you all. It is a delight to be here today. I have the opportunity and blessing to introduce this incredible woman that I'm holding. Now, I've been holding her for a while. I'm going to be honest with you. Today is not the first day. Since we were teenagers. I've been holding her for over 30 years. 36. And I haven't let her go. 36. I love her so much. She is a jewel, a gem, the love of my life. She is a gift, not just to me. She gave me four children, a whole lot of them. She says she won't give me more. But if y'all pray about it, pray about it. You know, the fervent effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I love her so much. She is a heartbeat of my life. And um, I cannot say this any greater. For the last 30 years, she has made my life better. Every single great moment of my life. I've invested with her. Mm. And so I am grateful and blessed and wonderful to introduce the love of my life, my heartbeat, the woman that God has given me. She is simply amazing to me, to the ministry, to our children. And I think you're going to dig her too. Please welcome a lot of folks. She's Dr. Yolanda. Some people, they call her Mama Y around the church. Other people call her Pastor. To me, I call her Silk. So mm -hmm. I introduce to everybody my Silk. Pass the Elon Peters. Aww. Oh, thank you. That's our friends right there. <laughs> We've been, thank you so much. I've been with, with my good boyfriend there for over 36 years. I met him when we were just young teenagers. Um, first, thank God for this opportunity. God is good to speak to pastors and pastors' wives. I think that's probably one of my passions, um, but I cannot move forward without giving a big, huge virtual hug to our dear friends, um, Minister First Lady um, Rico Jenkins. Love you both so much. They have been to our church many times. And when I tell you, they're just humble, gracious people who love God and have a passion for making sure that his kingdom word is spread. So thank you for the invitation. So um, as you know, that's my wonderful husband. We are in ministry together. Um, we have a campus that's over um, 300 some thousand, I don't know, acres, and we have a 10,000 seat of church. Uh, we own um, a senior living housing. We're about to erect a senior assisted living housing. We have a daycare, we have a school, we have a college, and we have warehouses that help people start their businesses. But my greatest pleasure is being God's child, the wife of Joel, Bishop Joel Peebles, and the mother of my four incredible children. Um, so thank you for having me. So I'm a fun person. Um, I like to laugh. I like to smile. And I hope you do too. So before I go into like just these few things that I want to pray that really helps you in ministry, um, you can imagine, and I'm sure if you were to ruminate over what you've had to experience in ministry, to get to a 10,000 seater building with 10,000 members, you have to know that came at some costs. And I'm not referring to monetary costs. It came at some uh, costs of, your, of our time, some costs of us having to have testimonies. It just came at a cost. But before I begin, I kind of want to hear from some of you. I just want one of you, two of you to kind of raise your hand. I want you to tell me what your experience has been in ministry thus far. Are you a pastor? Are you a husband and wife in ministry? Are you um, a first lady, but you're not? preaching in the church. What's the dynamic? I want, I want you to be a little participatory in this session. I only have 15 minutes and I am a stickler of time. So um, if somebody's going to let me know when I'm two or three minutes up, that would be great. Does anybody want to participate in that? No? Yes? No? Oh, wonderful. Um, oh, I need my glasses. Susan, beautiful. Is that First Lady Susan Edwards? Oh, I thought they raised their hand. Maybe not. Her husband is trying to encourage her Praise to speak. God. I'm grateful to meet you on Zoom. Um, Honored to meet you. Yeah. Uh, we are sisters in Christ and sisters yes. in love and yes. family, unity, and love. I'm, I'm married to this one for 39 years <laughs> and going. And he's my boyfriend. <laughs> he's my love. And yeah. God gave him to me. And I have a ministry, which I call a ministry. I'm a substitute teacher in high schools. 
And in this high school, we have a peace club. In this high school, we have first uh, priority, who is God. Okay, there are two clubs like this in high school. And this is really great. We are here in Florida. And I, I am over there and I, I am a part of both of those. And I also teach as much as possible in all the classes that I, I substitute in. So I have the birds view and I get a chance to meet a whole bunch of teachers too and assistant principals. So this is really a great uh, ministry for me, a good, good place, platform for me to share about God, share about uh, true, true Mother and what she's been doing for peace, true peace and true love. And I also share about universal principles. So this is my story. Thank you so much. Oh, aren't you just wonderful, honored to have met you over Zoom. You. So um, we'll go kind of go through this quickly. My husband and I actually have um, close to 300 of our leaders away out in Delaware. We take them away every week on a, um, every year. We take them on a retreat um, and we pay for everything so that we can revisit our vision, our mission, our purpose. So I took a break from my sessions to come up and be with you because I promised um, Pastor Minister Rico that I would do so. So I'm gonna make this expeditious and run back downstairs. Um, again, thank you for having me and I've enjoyed every person so far. So make it quick. My husband and I were just cute, like just dating one another. Um, his parents um, erected the ministry and we just came along as two little young children that didn't want to do anything but serve the Lord. Um, mm. And so I've been working in the church since I was 15 years old. Mm. Um, my husband is the youngest of his parents of, of three boys. His, uh, his older siblings both have passed away. His parents mm. have both passed away. And so it is him and I. And now, thank God, our children are grown and can help us in ministry. Ministry is probably the greatest, most resplendent gift that someone can be given to do. There are a lot of heartfelt work on this earth, such as police officers, firefighters, EMT workers, educators, all very profound, heartfelt work. But to be called to ministry is a whole nother thing. A doctor can go into surgery and a doctor can save a life. Is it still a different thing to get into the soul of a person? So I want to remind each of you, particularly mm -hmm. if you are the captain of the ship for a ministry and you are running a ministry, even if it's evangelistic, God bless your work. But I really want to speak to those who have physical buildings and you are navigating the work of the Lord and helping people, not the easiest thing to do. Um, be encouraged. Remember why you were chosen. There are people all over the earth that would love to do what you do, to travel the world, to teach the good news. But there's a reason God handpicked each and every one of you. So I, you should, okay, y'all need to clap because that's a blessing when you've been chosen. Okay, good. Now that feels better. We have been, we are blessed when God says you. I want you, Dr. Uh, Clark Alexander. It's a blessing when God says, I want you. That's a blessing. And we forget that we didn't choose ourselves. It was the grace of God that shined down upon our lives and said, I want you. It is the resp responsibility of each person. We are all ministers of the gospel. Yes. Yes. No, we are all ministers of the gospel. But when you are the under shepherd of a church, the responsibility is copious. And we never want to forget for the reason we're there. And that is to usher pe in people into the love of God. If you are married, anybody raise your hand. If you are married and working in ministry with your mate. Okay, I see the Ricos, Dr. Alexander. Oh, do I have a word for you? <laughs> hey, listen. It's a different thing to be in ministry with your husband or your, and your, or your wife. My husband and I are around each other literally, okay, 23 hours a day, seven days a week. We raise a family together. We work together. We take 
Hi, my, my son in love just walked into my hotel room um, and we do everything together. And guess what? Not everyone can do it. It takes people that know their place in God. Yes, it takes people mm -hmm. who know their place in God. To all the wives, listen to my heart and I will let you go. Oh, and my daughter just walked into my hotel room. <laughs> um, um, to the wives whose husbands are in ministry, hear my heart. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. We have wives, husbands, preachers fly from all over the country to meet with my husband and I to ask us, how do we do it? And I'm going to tell you how we do it. We put God first and we maintain unselfishness. The mission is not about us. It's not. It's not about what we desire. It's not about what we want. It is about what God said. And when my husband and I disagree, I understand that we can only have one captain on the ship. Why? Because let's just say we have two captains. And one captain, we have a storm. A storm is coming. And one captain says, hey, we can make it through the storm. We can triumph through the storm. I think we should forge ahead. But the other captain says, no, it looks a bit too dangerous. The water is treacherous. I think we should turn around. What do you do? So for me, one of the main reasons next to us, making sure we keep God first. When we disagree, I default to whatever it is that God is telling him. Wives, you must trust that your husbands are hearing from the Lord and you have to default to them. We don't have an issue working in church together because of that. I realize it's not my desire, not my want. And trust me, I am an educated woman and I know what I want and I know when I want it, but I know when I have to back up and say, Lord, have thine own way. And that's what this is all about. So for real, I want to celebrate each of you in such a resplendent way. God bless you. May my assignment today be more of telling you what you need to do. I want to tell you how I know God is copiously proud of each and every one of you. Keep triumphing. Don't let anybody, any situation tear you down. It'll be another time I would love for you to invite me. The um, Rico Jenkins and his wife, they know after 40 some years of building this ministry, we had six employees who sought to overthrow the original board of directors to include my husband and myself. We, 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 the, the erection of the church was birthed out of our family's idea and they came in to steal, to kill and destroy. And we went through an acrimonious court battle for six years. And it was really for 40 months, for 40 months. And mm. What I can tell you for sure, without going into all the logistics of that, every day of those 40 months, my husband and I chose to love and forgive, love more and forgive more, to love again and forgive again. And for every time we went to court, we loved it. Again, and we loved it. We never took to social media. We never took to tell our congregation how broken and hearted we were. When we, all of us, when we walk into our buildings called churches, which I prefer to call a classroom of spiritual learning, when we walk in, no one cares about our issues. Not that they are, are heartless, but they come to the classroom to learn about God. I don't walk into a, a, a geometry class to learn about history. I don't work into a physics class to learn about mathematics. They come to the church to learn about Jesus. And all we ever wanted to do was for people to see Jesus in us in the worst time of our lives. And I can tell you this, it's been now four or five years. We've been back in our church that we built for years. And we can honestly say, that our church family remained together because they saw two people who legitimately had a heart for God. It is not how many scriptures we know. It's not how we can exegete the scripture. It's not how we can apply scriptura sui sepsis interprets to the scripture. It doesn't matter if you have a PhD in theology, religion, mommyology, whatever you want to call it. It's about us being an example of the word that we preach. Bottom line, and I'm here to say thank you to each of you for your intrepid work, for your fearless work, for your stick to 
for your ability when some days you don't feel like it. Because we as pastors and first ladies, we go through too. But I want to celebrate you for staying the course. There is something about a man and a woman that stays the course and that we never give up. Why? Because we know we have the victory. One thing I don't ever do, I don't pray for a breakthrough. I never pray for a breakthrough. I don't pray for a breakthrough. You know why? Breakthrough happened when Jesus died on the cross. I pray for manifestation of the breakthrough that God already put in place. I don't pray for healing because I call upon God to help me maintain my health. And the Bible says we have what we say. And I'm going to say what I'm saying unapologetically because daddy, who's my God, said we can bring him in remembrance of his word. So I know his word because it is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my pathway. So if you know his word, you can operate in his word and you can be in a place of complete joy, equanimity, and peace because the word of God is guiding you. I am honored to have had this opportunity Continue to do what you're doing. May a dying world know that there is a risen savior because of the love they see in your eyes. May a dying world know that there is a deliverer because of the compassion that exudes from your spirit. May a dying world know that they can have hope again because of the forgiveness that you give to those that don't even deserve it. Again, thank you for this opportunity. To the Jenkins, I am honored that you allowed me to have this moment, and I pray that you have a remainder of a resplendent day. Thank you again, and God bless you, Archbishop Lewis, for hosting. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you.